Hey everybody, welcome back to the Michael Lofton Show here on Reason and Theology. Last show before I head to Rome and Israel, so the upcoming shows that you will see over the next week or so are pre-recorded, so this will be the last live for the time being that I can tell, unless I get a chance to do something either in Rome or Jerusalem. We'll see how that goes. I'll do my best to upload some stuff on occasion, though. But I want to talk about the head of the Ukrainian Catholic Church. Uh, he talks about the war, the Pope, and same-sex blessings uh, with the document Fiducia Supplicans that came out. And I um, I thought his comments were interesting and, and, and helpful um, in better understanding um, his position on the matter. And so I wanted to review it um, because I think it will be productive. There was unfortunately some irresponsibility on part of some content creators who did not apply enough nuance and appreciate the distinctions that the um, Ukrainian patriarch was making. And so they irresponsibly uh, disseminated false information saying that he rejects fiducia supplicans and that is not at all accurate that led to a lot of confusion a lot of people then saying see look the eastern catholics are rejecting this as heretical and there was just it it fed the um it added more fuel to the fire and was really unfortunate. And um, I think it's helpful that he has further clarified his position. And so I think it will be productive for us to take a look at it and see where he's coming from um, and why I think what he's saying is um, is completely understandable. Is, is accurate. It needs to be appreciated. Uh, but it's also not mutually exclusive with fiducia supplicans. So let's take a look at what he says. I'm going to um, just recommend that you read the whole thing as far as his comments on the war and the Pope. I thought they were also helpful. We're going to skip down specifically to his part on same-sex blessings, though, because that's what we're going to focus on today. All right. So he said the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church has no plans to implement. So we're not talking about rejecting. We're, t we're talking about implementing versus not implementing um no plans to implement or further discuss the vatican document fiducia supplicans which allows for non-liturgical blessings for homosexual couples and here again according to the document what's understood is not the blessing for a relationship but rather for two persons who are in a relationship but the object of the blessing is for persons i've gone through that uh distinction at length so just check out the fiducia supplicans playlist for more on that the ukrainian church was the first eastern church under rome to declare that the document would not be implemented in its jurisdiction and if you recall there was actually prior to that um, an eastern catholic chaldean bishop who says it will be implemented there were also other byzantine catholic bishops who said it will be implemented and welcomed the document and accepted the distinctions in the document so overall it looks like you know there there's plenty of eastern catholics byzantine or even on who have received the document, understand the distinctions that are involved, accept the distinctions, and are implementing it. However, in this case, um, the um, major archbishop or patriarch of the Ukrainian Catholic Church has said it will not be implemented in his territory. And here he explains why. Shortly after the document's release, Shevchuk issued a statement in which he said that because the document does not address questions of Catholic faith. So notice that. So he, he's not making the claim that the document is heretical. He, he wants to say, look, this doesn't even address issues of the Catholic faith. It, it's merely disciplinary, in other words. So pay attention to that for all the people who sold you a bill of goods and told you that the major archbishop was rejecting the document on grounds that it's heretical or false teachings. You know what? They, they told you something that is just simply not true. He doesn't believe that. He doesn't even believe that it touches on issues of Catholic faith or morality for that matter. And he says it does not refer to any prescriptions of the code of canons for Eastern churches and does not mention Eastern churches. That's correct. It, it does not. Um, however, that doesn't necessarily mean it doesn't apply 
to the Eastern churches. And I would just direct people to the Eastern Catholic bishops, both Byzantine and non, who have received the document and are implementing it. They, they are under the impression that it applies to them. So I would just throw that in the mix. It applies exclusively to the Latin church, he says, and has no legal force for the faithful of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church. Again, I would just compare that to what other Eastern Catholic bishops have said. Each Vatican document has a special process of reception in our church, he explained. Fair enough, fair enough. We have our own way to be open to everybody, but also how to deliver church blessings, he said. In our tradition, we never can distinguish between liturgical and non-liturgical blessings. So I would just direct people to the Byzantine people in the Byzantine tradition who say this is a legitimate distinction. So I would direct them to those bishops who who would take a different position and say there is a distinction. But I I get what the patriarch is saying. And there in the way that he's using liturgical versus non-liturgical, he's actually right. And that's what we're going to see. What he's saying is true. But for those Byzantine Catholics and even non-Byzantine Eastern Catholics who have accepted this distinction, what they're saying is also true. The difference is there is a bit of confusion on how we're using the term liturgical here. And in the way that the patriarch is using the term liturgical, it's different than how Fiducia Supplicans uses the term. So the patriarch, what he says is true. But also fiducia supplicans and what it says is true. The difference is, I think that we're getting our, you know, uh, wires crossed here. Um, and, and I'm going to bring that distinction out here. <clears throat> so he says, in our tradition, we can never distinguish between liturgical and non-liturgical blessings. When I grew up, always the sacred space. So notice how he's defining liturgical. Sacred space. He says, sacred space was not limited with the church building and i would say amen you know and I, I i don't know any catholic that would disagree with that i mean i think we could say all of creation is sacred right in, in one sense but there's also a difference between the sacred space of the altar versus outside of the altar even in the byzantine tradition even in the ukrainian tradition there is that distinction there's a distinction between the altar and the nave there's a distinction of sacredness between those. Even He would have to agree with that. Everyone agrees with that. So I, I think in this general sense that all of creation is sacred. Yeah, we, we can certainly agree. And if that's what we mean by liturgical versus non-liturgical, I'm on board with what he's saying. You can't make that distinction because in a sense, all of creation is sacred. He went on, we were taught that Christians are supposed to bring that liturgy of light outside the church. Amen. And, and you know, even Latin Rite Catholics would agree. Ita misa est. And at the end of the Mass, there's that proclamation to go out, you know, and take what you've received here in the liturgy and bring it out into the world. So I think everybody agrees. All Catholics actually agree with what the patriarch is saying. I think the difference is, but this is not what Fiducia Supplicans is getting at. This is not the message it's trying to communicate. Fiducia Supplicans is not trying to say that, you know, there's a difference in the way we talk about sacred space or we're not to bring the gospel outside of the church. That's not what Fiducia Supplicans is getting at. So while I very much am sympathetic to what the patriarch is saying and agree with him, I think that that's a little different, however, than what Fiducia Supplicans is saying. So he says, so for us, it's very difficult to distinguish liturgical blessings. I, I agree if we're using that definition, right? But I'll show you in a moment how Fiducia Supercons uses the, bless, uh, the distinction between liturgical and non-liturgical. He noted that if approached by someone asking for a blessing, he would give it without asking if the person was in a state of sin or if he had not been to confession. Amen. Amen. And this is actually an affirmation of Fiducia Supercons. This is affirming the essence of what Fiducia Supercons is saying. The Holy Father is saying, whether this person is in a state of grace or not, is in a legitimate relationship or not, you can give a blessing to these individuals. Again, because the blessing is not for their union, it is for the persons, regardless of what state they are in. So what the patriarch is saying is, I'm all on board with, and you know what? That's actually what Fiducia Supercons is really getting at. 
So in reality, I, I think that he accepts what uh, Fiducia, uh, Fiducia is saying. Of course, if somebody will approach me and ask for the blessing, I'll give the blessing, he said. It's not a moment to inquire in his personal condition as a Christian. That's exactly what Fuduchi Sukhan says, you know, without putting them through an interrogation and determining whether or not they're in a state of grace. We give a blessing not as one of approval and approbation for their lifestyle, but rather the blessing is a cry out to God to pour out grace on them to help them live a holier life. That's what is meant here. But to distinguish so sharply between liturgical and non-liturgical blessing for us is quite difficult. Agreed. If we de if we define liturgical in the way he's defining it, which is a legitimate way to define liturgical blessing, but there's also other ways in which the Vatican is using the term liturgical that's also legitimate. It's just different. And so I think we're getting our wires crossed here. Um, so let me show you the distinction that Fiducia is getting at. So if you look at both the document itself, Fiducia says, in this sense, it's essential to grasp the Holy Father's concerns that these non-ritualized blessings never cease being simple gestures that provide an effective means of increasing trust in God on the part of the people who ask for them, careful that they should not become a liturgical or semi-liturgical act similar to a sacrament. So how is it using the word liturgical? It's not using it in the sense that the patriarch is using the term. And again, the way the patriarch is using it is legitimate. But in theology, we often have the same word for multiple meanings. And Fiducia is talking about a different kind of liturgical blessing versus non-liturgical. It's, it's what we would say ritualized. Like you have a, a manual that tells you here's what to say, and it gives you rubrics and tells you what. That's, that's the distinction that's being made here. Fiducia Suplicans is talking about a blessing that is non-ritualized. It's not going to be in a manual and here's the words that you exactly say and here's the particular gestures and blah, blah, blah. No, it does give some general guidelines on what gestures to avoid, but it wants to allow for something spontaneous. Somebody walks to you off the street and asks for a blessing. You're not pulling out a liturgical manual and starting to read from it. You're giving a very simple blessing. May Almighty God bless you and help you to live a holier life and be conformed to his image and likeness, name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I mean, something spontaneous like that. That's all we're referring to. So that's what's meant by liturgical versus non-liturgical. A ritualized versus non-ritualized blessing. And you know what? The patriarch actually makes this or believes this distinction. Because he's saying, if somebody will approach me and ask for the blessing, I'll give them a blessing. It's not a moment to inquire into their personal condition. So he would just give them a simple blessing. And in the Byzantine tradition, we do have these simple blessings. We, we do have this distinction in the Byzantine tradition. Hence why Byzantine Catholic bishops and even non-Byzantine Eastern Catholic bishops have accepted this distinction and said, we're going to impl implement this. So I think what's happening is the patriarch is pointing to a legitimate distinction, but I think we're missing what Fiducia Suplicans is getting at. And so we're getting confused and we're saying, well, wait, hold on. You're talking about non-liturgical blessings, but wait, we're supposed to be able to go out and bring everything that is sacred to the world. Right. That's not what Fiducia Suplicans is excluding or, or getting at when it makes this distinction. It's just talking about Ritualized versus non-ritualized. That's all. Spontaneous versus something that you would have to open up a manual and start reading the blessing from. That's all it's getting at. And that distinction's there. That distinction is there. Um, so I don't think that there's a fundamental difference here. And then also, if you look at practical reception, that section that um, Fernandez gave and further clarifying the document, if, if you read this section, it says, some bishops, however, express themselves in particular regarding a practical aspect, the possible blessings of couples in irregular situations. The declaration contains a proposal for short and simple pastoral blessings. It's not liturgical or ritualized. See, see that distinction, right? It's talking about ritualized versus non of couples in irregular situations, but not of their unions, it says. Notice that. Because the document itself emphasizes it's not of their union. 
underlying that these blessings are without a liturgical format. So again, notice how the word liturgical is being used. It's not ritualized. It's not a manual that you're opening up. It's just spontaneous, extemporaneous. I'm am making up the prayer on the spot like I literally just did about five minutes ago on this show. Um, blessings without a liturgical format, which neither approve nor justify the situation in which the people find themselves. So this is not an approval of their relationship. Um, documents of the dicastery for the doctrine of the faith, such as fiducia subcons and the pra practical aspects, may require more or less time for their application, depending on local context and the discernment of each diocesan bishop within his diocese. The bishop kind of has to discern how this is going to be implemented. In some places, no difficulties arise for their application, while in others, it may be necessary not to introduce them, like the African bishops in their situation, because they have some legal difficulties involved in this. And they're saying, yeah, that's understandable. While taking time necessary for reading and interpretation. So in other words, we can't be just so quick as a bishop to say, hey, this doesn't apply. You know, Fernandez is saying we need to take a little bit more time to think here. How does this apply to my jurisdiction? How does it, instead of just flippantly saying, no, 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 this doesn't apply, take some time to interpret this and read it correctly, and then ask that question, how does this apply to my people? Some bishops, for example, have established that each priest must carry out the work of discernment and that he may, however, perform these blessings only in private. That's legitimate. And I think that's best because... If it is going to be done in any kind of public way, there's often just too many opportunities for scandal. And the document constantly tells you to avoid scandal. So I think it's best to just say, you know what, disciplinarily, this just needs to be done privately. I think that's wise for the bishops who have said that. None of this is problematic if it is expressed with due respect for a text signed and approved by the Pope himself while attempting in some way to accommodate the reflection contained in it. Each local bishop, by virtue of his own ministry, has the power of discernment in loco, in his local territory, that is in the concrete place, that he knows better than others precisely because it is his own flock. Prudence and attention to the ecclesiastical context, to the local culture, could allow for different methods of application. But notice this, but not a total or definitive denial of this path that is proposed to priests. So you can't just outright deny this thing totally. No. But might there be circumstances where this can't be implemented due to this or that situation? Sure, sure. It's saying yes. But there can't be this just outright total definitive denial because in reality, you would actually have to start denying things that are very fundamental in nature such as just the difference between a ritual blessing and a non-ritual blessing um, and also the difference between um, or, or the fact that we can bless people in certain situations, not an approbation, but rather a blessing of an application of grace, even for people who are not in a state of grace. That's just Catholic theology that we're able to do that. I mean, in fact, if you go to the confessional, even before you've been given the words of absolution, usually the priest will give you a simple blessing. And even if you're not able to receive... Um, the forgiveness of sins because you don't have a firm purpose of amendment and the priest turns you away, they'll still give you a simple blessing. So these are just some basic concepts that we we already accept in our theology, so you can't outright deny it without then denying the theology behind it. Um, and then I would also go on to note that it goes on to say, although some bishops consider it prudent not to impart these blessings for the moment, we all need to grow equally in the conviction that non-ritualized blessings, you see there it is again. That's what we're talking about when we talk about this non-liturgical versus liturgical. Non-ritualized blessings are not a consecration of the person, nor of the couple who receives them. So it's not an approbation of, of an approval of, of the person. They are not a justification for all their actions, and they're not an endorsement of their life that they lead. When the Pope asked us to grow in a broader understanding of pastoral blessings, he proposed that we think of a way of blessing that does not require the placing of so many conditions to carry out this simple gesture of pastoral closeness, which is a means of promoting openness to God in the midst of the most diverse circumstances. You know what? 
That's actually what the, the major archbishop was saying. He's saying, look, I don't go and scrutinize the person's lifestyle for a simple blessing. He says, of course, I'll just give them the blessing. Well, right. And that's what fiducia supplicans is getting at. So in reality, I actually think that what the patriarch is saying is fundamentally consistent with fiducia supplicans. And the position that he maintains is fundamentally consistent with what Fiducia Suplicans is calling for. I just think that we're getting our wires crossed with this phrase liturgical blessings because the patriarch is defining liturgical blessings with a legitimate legitimate definition, but he's using it differently than how Fiducia is using it. And for that reason, he thinks it doesn't apply. And I would just point others to, but consider those Byzantine Catholic bishops and even non-Byzantine um, Eastern Catholic bishops who recognize these distinctions and are implementing it in their territory. And that's because they've, they're have they defining liturgical versus non-liturgical in the way that Fiducia Supplicans does. And they see how this actually maps onto the Eastern Catholic tradition, even the Byzantine Catholic tradition. It, it totally maps on when we just understand how the terms are being used. So I hope this helps clarify some things because there are a lot of people that were confused by what the um, Major Archbishop was saying at first. And there were a lot of people that you know reported a lot of misinformation about him saying that he's rejecting it. Eastern Catholics think it's heretical, blah, blah, blah. None of that's true. He never said any of that. He doesn't believe that he that it's heretical or there's faulty doctrine. He doesn't believe that he's not even rejecting it. He's just saying that it's not applying. But people were presenting it as if he's rejecting the thing, as, as if he rejects the, the theological errors behind it. And so I, I hope this helps dispel that fake news and show where the good patriarch is coming from. And you know what? At the end of the day, I have to say I, I agree with what he's saying. I, I agree with what he's saying. And we need to make sure we don't misrepresent him. The distinctions he is making are legitimate, but we also need to be careful in maybe not confusing that with what fiducia supplicans is, is getting at. So let's be a little bit more precise, a little bit more nuanced whenever we speak of Eastern Catholic reception of the document or even Ukrainian Catholic reception of the document. We, we have to be a little bit more precise in what he's actually saying over and against the headlines and the fake news that we saw some people irresponsibly reporting. Okay, again, I hope this was helpful. If it was, let me know that in the comment section. I want to know if you find this productive and helpful or if this is just uh, not very beneficial to you. Because if it's not, I can do other things. I can, I can uh, address other things as far as content. So let me know in the comment section. And hit the like button and also the subscribe button so that we can reach more people um, with this material and content, uh, especially to help kind of offset some of that other stuff that is floating around out there. So anyways, uh, again, hit the like button, subscribe button, and pray for the safety of myself and my wife as we travel to uh, uh, Italy and uh, Israel in the next, uh, as, as we do so in the next um, few weeks. So, all right, we'll see you later. Couples. Hey friends, do you want others to discover why the Catholic church is the church that Jesus established? And do you want to help people make sense of all the confusion in the Catholic church today? Help contribute to this mission by supporting reason and theology at patreon.com forward slash reason and theology. By doing so, you'll also get access to exclusive content for patrons only. Also, if you want to deepen your faith, there are free ebooks and even courses that you can sign up for by visiting reason.podia.com. Are you a Catholic thinking about converting to Eastern Orthodoxy? 
Or are you a Protestant discerning whether or not to become Catholic or Eastern Orthodox? If so, I have the book just for you. It's called Answering Orthodoxy and engages all of the arguments that Eastern Orthodox use against the Catholic Church. I respond to all of them. I show that they are in error and in fact they're inconsistent. Because the things that Orthodox are objecting to are in fact found in their own tradition. So the fullness of the faith can only be found in the Catholic Church. Check out the book right now at shop.catholic.com for your copy today.